adjusting. The game got louder. Oh. Oh, no, that's the... The, the, the TV. <sighs> oh, boy. How's that? Okay, cool. Now he can hear us. Yay! Right, it just went completely into the red. What does that mean? What are you talking about? That means now I can hear you. That means okay. we're really loud. We should probably turn the volume down. Yeah. How about that? How's, is that, is that better? better? Do we need to turn the game audio down or? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. Yeah, it is. Okay. No, it's fine. Cool. We're oh. good now. We're Yay. good now. We're good. Okay. Cool. Disaster averted. Yay. We're a little late, but we're doing. But we <laughs> took care of it. It's all good. That means there's a good. Like seven minutes of, of no audio from us. It's a good thing I started drinking. <laughs> non alcoholic grape juice, but still stream. <laughs> I wonder what. Oh, it probably tastes really bad, but I wonder what that would taste like with Kahlua in it. Probably really bad. Yeah, probably. I don't think uh, coffee and white grape taste yeah, go together. Yeah, I think Kahlua's more cream liquor, like to go with coffee or whatever. Yeah. So for for those who tu just tuned in, not the holiday. What was the point at 1 p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you like, I can make out and like make me some hot chocolate and spike it with Kahlua real quick. I don't think technically we're allowed to drink alcohol on stream. You know what? Yeah, fair point. That's actually very good information to know. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Or at least you're not supposed to talk about it. No, but like, you're not supposed to like, I'm drinking alcohol. You're not supposed to do that. Oh, okay. Like, this is alcohol. I am drinking this as it is alcohol. Like We're off to a lovely start yeah. on the stream. Yeah. Speaking of uh, sparkle juice, I'm going to go get some more sparkle juice. Okay. Because I'm thirsty. Sparkle juice for New Year's. What would you have done if I... Shh. Well, sorry guys, we gotta put the stream on hold to pick these shards of glass out of my foot. I uh, should I go with red grape or should I go with kosher? I don't know. I'm to go with Okay, I might steal a sip of it just to see what it tastes like. Alright, Adam, moment of truth. Do I name myself Libby or just Lib for short? Try fizzing up again? Yeah. yeah. I'm running the air out slowly. Uh, you know, if you kind of squint a little bit, this butterfree almost looks shiny. Like, I don't know, the wings have almost a pinkish tint here, or maybe that's just the shade. join us today and hopefully you missed the mess of the technical issues we were having earlier that's part of the joke please every single time omg starts we're just like hi we clearly know what we're doing we didn't mess up everything <laughs> the mystery dungeon is truly a mysterious place wow i wonder why it's called a mystery dungeon oh is this are you offering me a sip yeah you wanted a sip of the coach It's uh, kosher sparkled, sparkling juice. Oh, God. What's it called again? Sparkling grape juice. That's it. 
Uh, New Year's Eve was pretty chill. Uh, we just invited a friend over and spent the day pretty much playing video games and watching The Mandalorian. And we hardly played video games. We watched mostly Mandalorian and Good and Logon. Fair, yeah. Because Good and Logon is the best. Fight me. Yep. And Adam made chicken for dinner. I did he make chicken. the best chicken. I did make good chicken. My chicken's really good. What's funny is, like, because Bill Crow was like, pull out the ranch dressing. Like, we pull in ranch dressing. And like, oh, it's just my chicken. I'm like, no. Try without the ranch first. And then he was like, this is good. And didn't even touch ranch dressing the rest of the night with that chicken. Because it's good. It's good chicken. It's really easy to make, too. It just takes a while. How's Richard doing? Well, he's actually not in the room right now. I think he's still sleeping up on the bed. I don't think he's sleeping. I think he's just... Loafing. Yeah, probably loafing about, as cats do. Yeah, but he's, he's doing pretty well, though, still being a dick. Mm -hmm. The only downside of drinking this this juice is it uh, makes you burpy. Use a move with A! I'm still disappointed that in the rem in the... Ooh, ancient power! That's gonna be broken as hell later. How'd you get ancient power that quick? I, I think we'll start off with, like, a special move. What, or, like, ancient an power? Move, an egg move, maybe? I would expect nothing less from a cat. Exactly. It's in their job description. And we find them cute anyways. Ancient power, destruction, and death. Hello there, Pidgey. Would you like to meet my friend? <laughs> Mr. Mallon! <laughs> Hi, Mr. Mallon. <laughs> oh, it's General Mountain. Oh, General Mountain. It's General Mountain. Yeah, I've been watching more of DBZA bridge later. you think I would remember. Dragon Ball, though. Oh, so like 19 oh, God, episodes yeah, we're away. Close. Yeah, Adam got me more into Dragon Ball, like over the years. Like, granted, DBZ Abridged did most of the work, but he did also get me interested in, like, the series proper. Mm. I'll just murder people that are sleeping here just minding their own business. Well, of course, how else are you going to get experience points? Exactly. Besides, it's, a, it's called a stealth attack, it's the most tactical approach. I've been playing more gates lately, so I keep forgetting the auto mode is a thing now. I'm glad that it went after the... What did it say? Encounter a Pokemon? When you encounter any enemy Pokemon in auto mode, auto mode will end. Oh, okay. I'm dead now. Mm -hmm. Auto mode is actually probably really nice for streaming, because you just gotta hit auto mode and really just talk. Like this one? Yeah. And it goes after all the items too, which is great. Fainted from fire. Yes. <laughs> it's like all like on the ground, like turning into like ash, like it has fainted. Well, I mean, hey, if Norman Bataan's essay on how Joan of Arc died, then heat exhaustion is a perfectly valid way to die. Yeah, but do we really want to take advice from Norman Bataan? Nope. Though, I wanted to get, I wanted to get French Hill Pie. That does sound good, oh my god. Yeah, but Bill Kirsten didn't like French Hill Pie. And then I was like, okay, what well, if we get some tiramisu? And he's like, I don't like tiramisu. And I was like, okay. Chocolate and boost. Well, looks like we already have a little stand. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, no, Alex, I saw that model earlier today when Finn put it up. And it's so cool. Yo, what is that? It's for, it's, I think it's from Warhammer. Yeah, it looks like Age of Sigmar. Are those tentacles coming out here? No, there's like a scythe. Oh. He's a claw, like a crab claw. Oh, I mean, oh those are tentacles. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That is pretty sick. I don't know anything yeah. about that, but it's sick. Oh, it's a, okay, it's for Slanesh. Yeah, it looks so oh, cool. Oh, okay. 
Oh, you know what? That makes sense. That makes sense. It's, it's a Slanesh model. That makes a lot of sense now that I'm looking at it. Well, I like to think that once that counter kind of grows up, he actually does join your team. That'd be cool. Because, like, especially since Butterfree is a little better, like, as a fighter nowadays. Mm -hmm. I wish, I wish Warhammer models weren't so expensive. I just buy it. I, I, if Warhammer models weren't so expensive, we'd be using nothing but Warhammer models for Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> because they're so good and pretty, and they're so detailed, they look awesome. Ah, uh, but no. Yeah, way too expensive. eBay? That's true. But like, peop, but a lot of time on eBay, because I go on eBay a lot for collecting purposes, and some people know what they're selling on eBay more often than not. And so it's really hard to find people who don't know what they're selling and sell it for really cheap. But when you do, God, when you find people who don't know what they're selling, that is like the best feeling in the world. You're like, yep, here you go. Here's like $5 for this thing that costs a couple hundred. <laughs> Thank you. Like I, uh, for my collection, I have a, uh, I have a, yeah, but you will also run into people just wanting to get rid of their armies and lots. That's true. That's true. I mean, spending like 150 bucks on like an army is chump change, really. Like, that's a steal. But it's like 150 bucks, so like, you have to like, want to put down the money on it. I just thought of something. Yeah, you know what? Like, your partner Pokemon just brings you to this place and is like, yeah, I thought this would be a good place to live. Like, was it theirs to begin with? Like, did they just like <laughs> stumble across that random, like, abandon and be like, Oh, well that's convenient. Yeah, no, you're squatters. <laughs> <laughs> and the actual inhabitants are just on long-term vacation throughout the whole day and post-game. Yeah. I mean, game and post-game. You don't yeah. ask questions about that, movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh. Ask me no questions and I should tell you. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, so the, you know that, um, that Mew DS, that like special limited edition Mew DS that was like really a couple, I thought they only like a thousand or so sold in one specific Pokemon Center in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would go for like $900. I got mine yeah. for about $200. Damn! Right? That's a good deal. Yeah, no, the guy didn't know what he had. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll give you $200, I'll give you $200 bucks for that. Also, like, remember the, the Pokemon Park DS? Yeah. Remember I gave the guy $20 bucks for it? Mm -hmm. he, only, he wanted like $10 for it, and I messaged him, he's like, I'm talking to this other person, I was like, I'll give you $20 if you sell it to me. And he was like, deal! <laughs> I was like, yes! <laughs> 20 bucks, 20 bucks for a DS, and it came with diamond version. Nice. That was, oh my god. Oh my, how was, how was that one of the random generated Team games? Team Fluffers. Team Fluffers. Top squad. I don't know, I do kind of like Punderful, but I want to see what we can get from the generator. Um, Team Top Squad? I think you mean top, uh, Team Top Gun? Excitements with a Z. Well, I mean, neither me nor my partner Pokemon really have fur. I mean, but, but Fluff is pretty cool. Tenacity. Top, top helpers. helpers. <laughs> Team Top Helpers. Rescue Team stars. Rescue stars. <laughs> Lucky Pals. Team, Team Pokemon! <laughs> Team Allies. Team Some Spectral Specs. Team Specs Specs. Damn it, Moon Moon! Team Specs Specs. Team Efficiency. We are definitely not efficient. <laughs> Team 4 Help. Team 4 Star? No. <laughs> Team 4 Star. Team 4 Help! Team Ribbon Clan. The Red Ribbon Army. Uh, if only you could put. Wait, you could put Team Red Ribbon. I don't want to be the, the bad guys, though. Team Red Team Grit. I like that. Team Sparkly. It's like Green Day, but Sparkly Day. Oh my god, especially if one of us learns Sunny Day later. Oh then god. that'll give, like, my Solar Beam a boost and boost their fire type attacks. Right, let's go with that. Also, I love that, they, that you can actually, like, see the scarves that you wear now. Mm -hmm. Like, 
granted not like a different scarf skin for each scarf item in the game, but just cosmetically you get a scarf. Or, I guess, more of a bow tie in my case. Well, hold on. Let's see what it looks like. So maybe it's just like being a really weird with the frame. Yeah, I think it's being weird. Because I thought I could see like the band like a little bit before it disappeared, like behind the Mm -hmm. round thingies around my neck. The pods? The seed things? The seed pods? Pod people? The buds? That's, prob that's probably what it is. The yeah, buds. especially given that like it turns into a flower later when you evolve. Yeah, that's why when you said that, like, you know, it makes sense. That makes a lot more sense than the buds. They're best buds. This is what I want my future house to look like, Adam. Plants everywhere. <laughs> this is like a, the thing I sent you, the, the, the Ghibli house filled with plants everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, plus everything's so curly and pretty. You're curly and pretty. Well, my hair's curly, maybe. You're pretty. Somebody has to think so. Let me wash my face a little bit. Do some zoomies around the place. I'm sorry, I just really like the house that you get in this game. I'm a little disappointed that when you're a water starter, you can't swim around in the water that's in your house. Right? Mm hmm. Disappointing. So I could haunt all my dreams. You know, and then I saw her face. Anyone who wasn't here when we were talking about it, um, I kind of ended up picking Charmander this time because I thought it would be funny if this Charmander was like a stand of um, one of the other Pokemon that shows up later in the game. Yeah, the Char Charizard from Team ACT. Yep. By the way, um, like as an adult, that team name was awful. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're Team ACT. Oh, how'd you come up there? Well, because they have Charizard and Tyranitar. It's like, oh, that's. You mean you came up with that when you were a Charmander and Abra and? They were thinking ahead. They, they were thinking ahead. Yep. They were thinking ahead. Plus, like, they knew they were Gosh great. dang it! Because if you if you if you name it team if it was team act instead of team act, that's actually really clever because it's the name that they do because they're they're acting you know, to help others. Also, but it's not. It's team act. On the other hand, what if they had gone with the first letter of their first stage of their basic stage names like team acl? Isn't that something that you can get hospitalized for tearing? Yeah, your ACL is like a beer. No, like, like, uh, death. No, he heard it as ro- no, no, he heard it as rotator. Can I remember if he heard it as rotator cough, or if it was his ACL? They knew they were it's great. It's his muscle. It's his yeah, muscle. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought so, yeah, I think, I think like, that I hurt his ACL. I remember if it was a muscle or like a tendon. Yeah, I think, it was, I think that hurt his ACL. But you know what? If they were like, team, we're Team ACL, oh why? Like, because we're the muscle. <laughs> we be muscling. Every day we're muscling. Oh my god, what if we. That would have made more sense if we picked Machop. Yeah. Blame, blame her. Blame her, Alex. She has ruined me. It's amazing. Actually, make puns now. It's, I'm so proud. It's awful and I hate it. Never understood how Pelper can fly. It looks like it has fins for wings. How does Dragonite fly with those tiny wings? Like Pokemon logic, I guess. Well, like, also, like. Pokemon magic? Within the lore of the, of the universe, Dragonite can fly around the world, like, in a day or something. Can it? Yeah. Like,. Pull it up. It's in one of the it's in one of the Pokedex entries. Here we go. Dragon up. It's very important that we stop turn around and pose before we leave for everything. 
Yeah, obviously. You gotta do the pose. It's a part of our morning ritual. Also, poses are cool. You know, thank goodness for, like, Steel Type actually, like, being super effective against fairies now, because I actually ended up using Magnemite as a partner in my main playthrough of the game. Like, even now, like, that same Magnemite is now a Magnet Zone, and he comes with us on nearly every, like, dungeon. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was wrong. It's not a day here. Dragonite is capable of searching the globe in just 16 hours. It is a kind hearted Pokemon that leaves lost in the ships. We essentially floundering ships in the storm for the safety of the Yeah, it can circle the globe in 16 hours. That's crazy. Like, goes past the red. That's when it's really bad. Never 
works. Is that better? No, no, it's fine. If, if you helping us out and telling us where it needs to be good, okay, that's it. Awesome. But yeah, you telling you telling us what things like, need to be fixed, go for it. Yeah, like we don't want to be like blowing out your headphones and, or have you struggling to like understand us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She goes, oh my gosh, crazy beef! Does she? Yeah. Oh my god, it's been years since I've seen since I've seen the same one. I've never seen it. She's got to go, oh my gosh! I remember she said that crazy beef and everything. Crowd? Really? Yes. Your Grode. mom was an English teacher, Adam. No, she wasn't. She, well, she was a teacher, and she got on to about your grandma. Yeah, she, she had a minor in English. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what it was. She had a minor in English. Chandra, why is the fair You know what? Valid. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, no, the part in your Pokemon isn't a standard for Adam or anything. I just went to the Pokemon. That's pretty cool. Mm. No, uh, Clefairy. So, okay, to answer that question, that is a very, that is a very, it's a very interesting question. Okay, so whenever I like things in shows, like in any type of media, I always make sure that my enjoyment of a character is always tied to, um, like, what is canon for that character. Right? You don't let fan things or head cannons change my opinion on a character because you know because then i'm not liking the character i'm basically just liking someone else's character with that character's skin on it um there is one exception to this rule and that is clefairy so when i was in high school i used to i i used to go on the nuzlocke forums all the time like, that was my... The Nuzlocke Formers is where I spent basically my, like, free time on the internet. Um, and so obviously I would read uh, Nuzlocke com like, other people's Nuzlocke comics or stories and stuff like that. Uh, well, there was one story I really liked. And I just remember kind of liking the story and everything like that. And I've gone back and looked at it and I was like, ah, I know exactly why She's I like loafing. this. She is Adam, loafing. I'm loafing. You are loafing. Um, That's a door. Anyways, it I'm is, sorry, continue. Very uh, but yes, so I've gone back and like read, read through it again, and I'm like, ah, I, I know why I liked it as, as a teenager. It's because there's fan service up the wazoo everywhere. Um, still a decent story, you know, like it's bad or anything like that. Um, but one of the main, one of the, one of the main Pokemon that the, that the character caught was a Clefairy, and they named it Decade, based off of Kamen Rider Decade. Um, I did not know about Kamen Rider when I first read this. I just thought it was really neat having a Clefairy that uses moves by putting cards into its belt and activating it. I was like, that's really cool. Um, and so, you know, obviously I read the entire thing. I really liked the ending. I really liked how, like, where Decade ended up. I liked where, like, all the characters ended up. It was really nice. I kind of liked it. Um, and so I, I just... I like Clefairy from that, and that's why whenever I catch Clefairy, you know, if it's female, I always name it Millennia, like, based off of, off of that specific Clefairy. I actually have several, like, Clefairy plushes. Um, I bought myself, like, one, or, I want Clefairy, there's Clefable and Clefa. I think I bought myself a Clefa, and I think I bought myself a Clefable, right? I think so. Yeah, I bought myself the Clefa think... and the Clefable, and you've bought me both of the Cle Clefairies. And everyone, I've named them after all the different, like, you know, lengths of time for years. So there's, like, obviously the first one was Millennia, and I got Decade, and then I got, um, I think I named him Eon, and then there's, uh, Century. I think I need to get Era, like one named Era, and that'll be all of them, I think. I think that'll be an entire like, all of the, the, the lengths of years. If I remember correctly. There's century, decade, millennia, eon, era. Yeah, I think that's it. If 
feeling of forgetting them. Oh, that's true. I really miss dummy bags. I'm yeah. trying! <laughs> I so, think you also have a moonstone. I do have a moonstone. Moon. It is. Well, what's this right over here? Wanna show it on camera? It's an actual moonstone, it's not a Pokemon moonstone. Because, like, I went shopping for, like, stones once and he came with me and he saw the moonstone and was like, oh, Libby, can I get one of these? I bought it myself and I have to ask him permission. Oh, right. I, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> I'm an adult. I can pay for my things. I like to pay for my food so often. I can't, yep. Yeah. I like paying you. I'm not paying you. I like paying you like, for yourself. I wish you liked paying me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have started collecting crystals and stuff, yeah. I just think they're neat. Yeah, I, did you see anything? I didn't do anything. Oh, yes, he is. She is very, she is the cutest stuff. That was cute as Richard. Plus, not even like half his strength. Yeah, not even. <laughs> like, if he went like half strength on me, he would break my back probably. Because I'm weak and squishy. Mm -hmm. But I still love you. Somebody has to. Why? Why what? Why would you do that? Why do? You put him in the ear. You did? Yes. When that happened? Just five seconds ago. I don't remember that. Well, if you don't remember it, then I guess it never happened. Yep, exactly. I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. Hmm. There's not a lot of meat on the baby, though. There's a lot more meat on the mom. Chat, what do you think would be the most delicious Pokemon to eat? How did we get to this conversation? Because I'm curious. I haven't done one. We just got out of bed like two hours ago. Yeah, but actually, yeah, we probably should do something about lunch. Most delicious. What do you think is the most delicious? Well, slowpoke tail, obviously. Would you eat slowpoke tail? I'd probably try it. I mean, it grows back. True. Wait, facts about the magic shrimp. Wait, isn't Magikarp technically eaten by people sometimes in the anime? They're all. It's, they're all eaten. Animals. All of them are eaten. Hmm, I always think of that one episode of Lost Kid and Ash and Team Rocket on Eat That Magic Card. Yeah, and then like in the show, they're like, oh, Magic Card's basically just scales. Like, there's no meat on it. I wonder what's Which, up here. I don't know if that's actually true or not. That wouldn't make any sense to me. So obviously, it needs muscles to move. Bufalon. Yeah, Bufalon would be good. Bufalon burgers. Yo, if I was gonna say Bufalon burgers, that would be good. I'm pretty sure that would taste like bison burgers. Really? Have you never had bison burgers? Oh. Is it a bufalon? Is it a buffalo? This place is really pretty. Is it bison? Well, they're not the same exact thing, but they're really close. Or are they? I can never tell. I keep, like, I know people say a buffalo and a bison are different, but how different are they? Apple Toast, Rolex, or Alchemy. You know what, Valid? That'd be good, though. Yeah, that'd be good. Those would be good, too. Well, those are a good, like, dessert Pokemon, right? They're not, like... Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, like, cook them up. You know? Well, I mean, you probably would want to. Food-based... Yeah, that's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Food-based Pokemon, that's true. Slurpuff. Far-fetched. It, it even brings I mean, its own seasoning. I mean... It's a duck, so you just have to cook it. But it also brings its own leek as a side dish. It is true. Or is it technically a stall? I think you'd... Hmm. Wait, I... Did I make a pun? Yeah, a stock. S-T-A-L-K is what I said. Yeah, I know. Not stock. I know. I know. You know? I do know. Did you know... 
Yeah. Uh, yes. I know everything. That's fair. It's valid. What am I thinking? Tacos. Damn it, you're right. Uh, but no, did you know uh, the, the Japanese name for farfetch is based off of the, like a saying in, in Japan, where it's like, you know, basically, you know, you're not expecting, like, don't expect the duck to bring its own, like, Oh god, what was it again? again? Oh, bison. bison have large humps at their shoulders and bigger heads than buffalo with beards. Yeah, that's buffalo. Are you saying the buffalo have beards or the bison have beards? I don't eat crustaceans, but those who like crabs or lobster would probably love to see 15 when they fall inside. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. yeah, that'd be so good. Bison's a beards, okay. Or crawdont. Sorry, Actually, crawdont and pork fish would probably be better for like a big seafood boil. Mmm, mm, seafood boil. God, oh, yeah, I actually really want seafood now. This conversation is making me hungry. Right. It's a shame that Red Lobster is like stupid expensive. And probably also closed. True. Probably a lot of things closed today. Like for multiple reasons. Well, I'm not saying we would go and sit in. I was saying we would get like delivery or pick it up. What I was saying. What we would be doing. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 also, bison are found in North America. <laughs> Buffalo and King Buffalo and Water Buffalo are native to Africa. Well, I mean, we all oh, know. Okay. The thing is, I thought everyone had a water buffalo. What? You know, yours is fast and mine is slow. Oh my god. Well, where do we get them? I honestly I don't know. But everyone's got a water buffalo. You know, I took my buffalo to the store. I mean, I haven't got his pen stuck in the And, like, during the trip, we spilled lima beans on the floor. And stream is demonetized for our good music. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but here, here I, but I didn't sing it though. Welcome, boys! <laughs> I just noticed Calvin Hobbes is your background. Oh, yeah, my background on my desktop is set to cycle through uh, the Polar Gallery. You know what? You're you're very right, Alex. Things have been taken down for us. Which one? We still have. We have not been taken down for well, a weird conversation. Yeah, I don't know what you feel like a weird conversation we have. I knocked on wood. That's what that loud noise was. We, uh, because, no, you know, no, knowing me, Libby, and all the DD &D games we've ever played, somehow. Sexual things get brought up. That actually doesn't surprise me at all. Well, because, like, you know, sometimes you want to know what a, what a snake penis looks like, and so you have to look that up. And you, know, you don't show it on stream, but you just, you know, got it. Sometimes you gotta know. To, no, hey, <laughs> Excuse Colleen, you don't Colleen, and are, <laughs> Colleen and I are just, are just as bad as the other. Honestly, putting both of us in a campaign is probably the quickest way to get. Get the conversation of, hey, what is this? What does this character penis look like? And you're like, what? And you're like, well, they're based off of a bird. And some birds have penises, so clearly we have to look that up. Honestly, if I ever do, do run a DD game of my own, I am pretty sure I cannot stream it because I have a specific idea of the song I want to play during like during like the final boss battle, and I'm pretty sure that is copyrighted. If it's one winged angel, then yes, it is. Well, not that. Chandra, what are your hobbies? I know Libby more from our Discord server, so I can get to know you more. Are you a regular Twitch streamer? I am! I actually uh, stream um, a D&D campaign um, uh, for the, 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 the channel called Our Modest Guild. Um, uh, funny side it here in the chat is one of my players is Alex. He plays Olyphius the Strange, or Olyphius... Uh, right, that was recorded. I forgot his last name. A 
really cool. Hey! Hey! And Will's Will. here. Will's here too. He's also in the stream. He plays Grandpa or Alva Dana's Trust Rexing Trump. Um, that's cool. I think it's just, I think it's Twitch.com slash, I, I think, oh yeah, I'm working. Twitch.com, well, Twitch.tv slash our modest deal. Uh, here, let me. Like that? Yeah. What the? Oh, you have to log in at Twitch. Uh, am I not logged <laughs> into my own Twitch? <laughs> huh, never mind then. Here, I'll put it, I'll put it, I'll put it in. So yeah, it's uh, twitch.tv slash our modest. Oh, I think I found it. Yeah. Yeah, so we uh, we stream. Um, we didn't do anything all of December. Because we're going to do something... Um, like the... Oh, the music of the game is still loud. Still loud? Uh, let's see. The Elgato Just turn down the Elgato a little more. Like, right about there. Alright, how's, how's that? Like, yeah, Better? Like, yeah, you have to kind of let go for it to go. Um... Alright, when we do get later into the game, I'm probably going to turn it up for a bit just so y'all can hear the tracks. Because, the, honestly, the music in this game is like... It's a huge part of my childhood. We've been turning down the Elgato stuff, and it's like... Uh... Are you turning it up or down? Down. I'm hitting the minus button. I don't see it. I don't know, does it still work like that when the switch is docked? I don't know. Like, we turn, maybe if we try we turn turning down the, down the volume Elgato. on the TV. Maybe. Yeah, maybe the TV music is actually getting in the way. There. Alright, is that better? Um, where was I? I was trying to stop. Right, we have, we're gonna do stuff in December, but some things came up and we weren't able to. Um, awesome. Yeah. And so we're coming back um, this month. Our first game will be not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And we'll be doing a uh, kind of little mini adventure that Alex will be running, playing some Perfect mutants and masterminds, uh, where we are gonna be playing villains who have survived after an alien invasion killed all the heroes and now we have to go and fight the alien invasion ourselves and i am really excited to play my character uh my character is the malicious mallard he's a, <laughs> he's just he's a duck he's, he's just a duck yeah we didn't make yeah that's true we didn't make characters yep he's just he's just a duck he's Honk. just a duck <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, Alex, maybe you and I will talk tomorrow about making characters. Cause I know, I know, I gotta make characters for Ethan's birthday game with Colleen. I still gotta work on my astral planner that Colleen got me. What's an astral planner? Uh, stuff on like the phases of the moon, planetary alignment, star chart, that sort of thing. That's fair. Well. Everyone needs to make characters, so next week might be ambitious. Well, yeah, plus you said you wanted to get, like, commission for everybody, like, commission character for everybody. So maybe we'll do something else next week, then. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. At least, at least my commission will be easy, because it's, it's just a duck. You, you don't do anything special. <laughs> he's, he's just a duck. He doesn't even, he doesn't even speak English. Oh my god, Diglett's face right Like, technically, I don't think he even really ruined our place. Like, I don't think that hole's on our property line. Probably not, seeing as there's, like, the sidewalk right there. Mm -hmm. If anything, that spot right there is probably public property. Oh, hold on, my own. Or city property? Uh -huh. How does zoning laws work in the world of Pokemon? How does zoning laws work in the world of the, of, of the real world? Like, who owns... Who owns the property next to, like, you know, streets where there's nothing around for miles, or roads, and there's nothing around at all? Is that all... Is that all the government's property? Or do they only own, like, a specific area around, like, the road, and then, like, anything further back? The, the government. Yeah, okay, but, like, yeah, I get, like, they own, like, the road, but, like... Obviously, that prop, that line only goes so far until it hits, like, you know, forests and stuff like that. Do they own, like, 
like the planes like pat like way off in the distance too. Ooh, that protein reward though. Yeah, I don't think we really have any good physical attacks later though. I'm pretty sure we're both special attackers. You don't have enough money to ask those questions. <laughs> that is very true. I do not have the money to ask those questions. Though, I would love to own my own property wait, 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 one of these wait, days. Wait, wait, wait. Like, not just a house. Like, I would like to own, like, property and, like, make like, a custom house. Like, I know this is, like, a huge, like, storybook, like, pop-up aesthetic here, but is that Ocean Horizon not beautiful or what? It is. It is beautiful. It's all, it's all sparkly before I ruined it by opening my inventory. Yeah, but what I'm looking at right now is very beautiful. Aw, you <laughs> dork. The majority of public lands in the United States are held in trust for the American people by the federal government and managed by the Bureau of Land Management, BLM. The United States National Park Service, the Bureau of Reclamation, or the Fish and Wildlife Service. Okay, so basically, it's all owned by the government. But what if I wanted to own some of it? Wait a second. Is our rookie badge just an egg with wings? Yep. Like, not even a colored egg, like just a plain old egg. Held in trust, so basically, you don't have you gotta fork up the monies, yeah. But I, well, yeah, God, I wanna, I wanna like, I wanna build a custom house. Also, the bank gives you a daily prison. That's awesome. I wish that's how it worked in the real world. I wish. You go into the bank like, Instead hey, of here's some money. <laughs> hey, here's some money. You came in today. It's like, oh, well, I mean, you get like item gifts in the game. Hey, here's like a thing that's worth money. <laughs> or it just helps you out later on in the dungeons. That's fair. I mean, isn't that just only stocks? You're not wrong. So, I gotta get I gotta start playing in the crossing. It's been ages since I got involved in the stock market. I haven't played since like summer. Oh Jesus. Why can't we do things house. like back in the day where you chop down trees and start building? That is not your house for me. Yeah, right? That should be how it works. Chop down a tree, like, well, this is this is where I live now. This is, this is my look. I, yeah, yeah. Well, look, I built here. Now I. Own this. I agree. That would be nice. But that's in my backyard. You tore up my driveway. Too bad. I, I, I live here now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's a weird way to say my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't told you what I want to do for like, for like a custom bathroom. Uh -huh. I don't think you have. So what I want to do is I want I would want a like if in, in the shower I would want like the speakers built in mm -hmm. and then have a touch screen. Like waterproof, of course. Yeah, obviously. And then have a touch screen that you can like you know you can choose the music or the YouTube and stuff like that. Because like you know me, I listen like I say podcasts, but it's basically just YouTube videos that. Too. And like sometimes I want to see what's on the screen. So it'd be really cool to be able to take a shower and like wash my hair and like have like you know those video essays and stuff like on like a screen that I can watch too. I mean I would probably just use the speakers for like actual podcasts. Mm -hmm. Cause like there is one I've been listening to lately that like takes a look at like famous cults throughout history and like looks at like how the founders like backstory and their psychological development and the and then what the cult actually did in addition to like the psychological tactics used to control people. That's right. I mean that kind of thing the Louisiana Purchase when he was covering about all the land west of Mississippi from France despite, you know, tribes and Native Americans living there. But you know, history is never happy. That's that's valid. That's valid. Yep. So wait, hold on. So they bought all the land on the other side of the Mississippi. Did they buy all the land on the east side of the Mississippi? The Louisiana Purchase, they bought all the land on the west side of the Mississippi. Did they buy all the land on the oh, east okay. side of the Mississippi? Oh, okay. We're making a reference. Nope, that is not a reference. That is a... Oops. Already played it with a 13 pound. <laughs> it, was worth, it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. Day. I think we're hitting a theme here. 
Yo. What? Bad World's good, yo. It is. Like, I, I don't even know that much about Star Wars, but I enjoy watching it. We got, we just need to watch the eighth episode of season two. The last episode, we literally just watch the last episode of season two. The yeah. first series. Well, we gotta wait till Blood comes over again to watch the eighth episode. But we can watch. We can finish Dragon Ball. And then move on to Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Yes. As much as I'm enjoying Dragon Ball, I cannot wait to get Dragon Ball Z. You should try the table that game of Fantasy Flight. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah. So Fantasy they're like a company. Fantasy Flight made a tabletop. Um, it's not like a role playing game. It's like a tabletop game. No, 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 no. Like it's like it's like Warhammer, but a little more a little more rigid and Star Wars, where you're playing okay. like you have ships. Is the Dragon Ball so long? Such a good. Yes, I agree. Dragon Ball is such a good time. Okay, so funny. Okay, I mean there's there. Yeah, it's true. There is a Star Wars role playing game. That is true. But that's not the game we were talking about. Did you play a one shot? I did. That's when I played Baby. With the figurines left or whatever. Yes, they were. Oh God, they're Jack's figures. That was it. They're called Jack's figures. Jack's figures. Yeah. Yeah. No one puts Baby in a corner. Uh, but yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay. So far enough, because you know, you both know that I absolutely love. Dragon Ball Z, all that jazz. Like, I love the Dragon Ball universe. Excuse me. But some surprising things about me. I didn't watch Dragon Ball. Ooh, Dragon Rage. That's gonna be fun. As a kid. That'll be good. I didn't watch Dragon Ball as a kid. Like, at all. I think I saw, like, up to the end of Gilaf, which is, like, five episodes in. And I never saw any more. I saw a couple clips here and there, like, with, uh, you know, like, when Goku defeats King Piccolo and, like, the final battle. With Piccolo, like right before. That's really it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, that's. I think that's right. That's true. I think mean, that's right. Yeah, most people started with DBZ. Cause like, yeah, cause you're not. Cause DBZ was the bomb day. So you know what's okay. So as both of you are very well aware, I am a gullible person. Not as much, not as much anymore. Um, but I was a much more gullible person as a child. Um, to the point where, like, I had I had this friend in elementary school, I don't remember his name, and I remember he told me he was like, I'm a Saiyan. And I was like, what? Yeah, he told me he was a Saiyan. I was like, what? You're, no you're not. He's like, yeah, I am. I have a tail, too. I'm like, you do? And he's like, yeah, I just keep under my clothes so no one sees it. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts exactly, Will. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, can I see it? He's like... I can't show it to you, but if you close your eyes again, I have my tail touch you. And I was like, okay! So I closed my eyes and had my arm out, and, like, and then I felt like a little, like, on my arm. Which was clearly his finger, you know? I like, guess as an adult, you were like, no, it's your finger. It's just, no. No. But as a, I was a little kid, I was like, oh my god, it's real! He's a sand! I, I, how did I have that? Oh my, oh my god! god. Like, I was so, like, I was like, oh my god, I, I want to be a sand! And when he told me, <laughs> what he told me was like, okay, if you want to be a Saiyan, you have to defeat Bobbity. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> look, I was a very gullible child, all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> so he was like, yeah. So he said, you have to defeat Bobbity. I went like, you mean in the games? He was like, no, no, no. You have to beat him for real. And I was like. How do you beat Bobby for real? Guys, <laughs> anime is real life. Undyne was right! Yeah. I was like, I was like, how do you beat Bobby in re for real in like real life? And he's like, okay, you have to like, you have to meditate, and then you'll be transported, and then you have to fight Bobby. <laughs> and if you defeat Bobby, you'll be a Saiyan. That child could have at least gone the extra step and had like lucky rabbit's foot to touch your arm with like, you know. <laughs> Bezos is trying to make anime <laughs> girls. <laughs> and so, so okay so here's the thing because I was that gullible as a child I was like okay okay I can do it I can do it and so what I did was that day oh my God, 
That day when I went got home from school, <laughs> I went to the backyard and I closed my eyes and I like I like stood there like a fighting pose for God knows how long, just like imagining myself like and like you know transporting all the way over to Bobbity and then like I started like punching and kicking the air like I was fighting Bobbity because I was like I'm fighting him I'm fighting Bobbity and then like I fucking. <laughs> Oh my god, oh, Adam, you hold treasure. On, hold on, I'm not even done yet. And so I was like and like I was I was throwing punches and kicks and I was like, oh well Deborah has like when he spits on people, he he turns them to stone. And I was like, what if I tricked Bobbity into thinking that I also knew how to do that? And so I I would I would fight and then I would spit. And then you were so gullible that you actually grew a real tail at the end. Yep, that's I god I wish that's how it worked. Um, but yeah, so then I, would, I would spit, and then like I would like in my head, he'd be like, "Oh no!" And he'd start panicking, like trying to take like the jacket thing that he like the little case thing he had on him, and like while he was distracted, I would like punch him and stuff like that, and I like beat him, and then I was like, "Yo, I'm a Saiyan now," and then I, and then I thought I was like, "Well, if I beat him one time, I turn into a Saiyan. If I beat him another time, does that mean I turn into a Super Saiyan?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure your biggest wish, if you could get to make a wish, is that you were actually a Saiyan in real life. Yes, that is true. But yes, I <laughs> just. Oh yeah, my god, that's Matilda. hilarious. Actually. Then Will is like big brain. When I was in elementary school, my best friend, I loved the movie Matilda. We would convince other classmates that we could move objects like her. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Brush trail. That's awesome. Brush trail, I'm sorry. Heck yeah. <laughs> So that's, all. but yeah. And so what I did was I just kept doing that. But I was like, I was like in my head, like for some reason I had this piece of logic, right? I was like, well, I can't beat him. Okay, logic. I can't beat him all the time the same day. That doesn't make any sense. So I have to beat him once a day. And so I would do that every day. I would get home from school, excuse me, and I would go into the backyard and do the same thing over and over again. Until I became like, I don't know, like Super Saiyan 6 or something like that. <laughs> you know, Super Saiyan 6. I was like, I'm Super the greatest. Six. Yeah, I'm the most powerful Saiyan on the planet. <laughs> oh my god, Adam. And that was when your parents were like, well, he's a weird. No, I think my parents knew I was a weird way before that. <laughs> Just your parents? Or your whole family? I think my whole family knew I was kind of weird. Oh, wait, what am I checking the mail for? No, to be fair, like, to be fair, that also could be chalked up to, oh, he's just a kid, whatever, I'm just playing pretend. Um, so, they probably, if that was the case, they probably didn't realize I was weird until 8th grade when I stole, like, Pokemon. <laughs> like, I remember, god, I remember having a conversation with my mom in the car. We were driving, I think we were driving back from somewhere. I know what, we were driving back from, from my choir practice. So I used to be a church choir when I was a little kid. Um, I remember, well not a little kid, but I was like in, I think I just stopped going like around the end of middle school. No, no, I stopped going to elementary school. That means we would have been coming back from my, my Boy Scout meetings. So they were coming back from Boy Scouts, and my mom was like, um, my mom was telling me like, you, you know, you, you need to stop, you know, acting this way, like, I know it's not how you act. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not doing anything, I'm not acting up or training i'm just i'm literally just being me like that's it and then i remember like later on like in high school my mom was like look i would much rather you be into pokemon and playing video games than you going out and drinking and partying and doing drugs like i would much rather you like pokemon that than is you an awesome drugs. way of looking at it actually, yeah Adam, like for real yeah, yeah yeah i agree if we ever have kids that's the way i want to look at it like look i'd rather be into pokemon and all this other shit that your grandma sherry thinks is childish mm -hmm. Then actually go and like do drugs and drink or whatever. Yeah. Though to be fair, my mom also did uh, the fear of God in me early on. And I remember I remember when I was a little kid, my mom was like, if I ever, ever catch you doing drugs, I will take you to the police myself. <laughs> we busy more drugs, which is more addictive than children. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a dare program focused on anime. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is the D.A.R.E. program actually did the opposite effect it was trying to do. It actually had, it actually got kids to try drugs more than, the, than like, really? not do them. Yeah. It's like a whole study and everything how the D.A.R.E. program was an absolute failure. 
and yet they still do it because they're like, it's an anti-drug campaign, so clearly it's working. It's like, no, no, it's not. You're doing, you're doing a horrible job, guys. Most of this misinformation. Like the fact, like, yeah, see, Will gets it. Like the fact when people are like, uh, weed is a gateway drug. Like, no, no, it isn't. It's, it's not, not at all. In fact, a lot of people who, you know, smoke marijuana actually stop smoking marijuana after a while. Like, it's not addictive. Doesn't kill you. None of that stuff. There are sparkles around a dungeon. Okay, the whole war on drugs was nonsense to target various people and the government didn't want around. That is also true. That is also true. The, the war on drugs, the whole thing. The the whole thing about, like, marijuana being, like, you know, as bad as it is, right, was literally because of that. Um, also, like, like, uh, oh god, it was like the head of... I don't remember what it was. Like, the head of some department of the government. It was like, oh no, we gotta get people to be afraid of things. Or like, you know, we need, we need an enemy, what is it? Oh, well, the Mexicans like smoking marijuana. Clearly marijuana makes it so you want to like, you know, kill people and all this stuff. Yeah. Mexican's cabinet? Yep. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, like, they knew that it was utter bullshit. Uh, they knew everything they were saying was not correct at all. But they did it because they targeted their political enemies, basically. So yes, so Will and Alex, you have learned something about me today, and that is, I'm a gullible little shit. <laughs> Especially when I was a child. Yeah, my friend of childhood wasn't I don't think mostly I just refused to play with the when I was born. Instead, like, did laps around the playground pretending that I was a Pokemon or riding a Pokemon. Yeah, also grass not a not a bullshit Why can you play a second? Why can you play a second there? What? Grass clearly. I mean, no, the birds eat seeds. That means it clearly knows how to do a grass type. <laughs> Elephants eat from over the Pokemon. Yeah, right. No, I don't think you've ever heard Ethan go on rant. About, I don't like, think I have. It's Should so. I be it's hilarious because like, I remember like you know, a lot of the times it's like, oh, this Pokemon has hands. Clearly, it gets a fighting type move. Through TMs, I can learn it. In okay, but. Grass not only exists, only came into being in like Gen 4. It only came into being? Because you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, okay, so Grass not was introduced in Gen 4. Let's see. They could not learn it in. But Infernic could! Infernic could learn Grass Knot in Gen 4. I think I'm trying to just... Yeah. It is! Infernic is clearly superior... To Blaze King? Yes. Blaze King gets a beat And? Infernic? No. But uh, Infernic doesn't need it because he's not. Well, I'm sorry that's He is, he is as the kids say, Boss AF. I didn't even learn it in Gen 4 and Gen 5. So clearly that means it started learning it in Gen, in Gen 6 then. He's a slow learner, get him some slack. Give Blaze good slack? He, no, Blaze good doesn't deserve slack. Wait, what is that? No, I'm seeing. Blaze good can't learn Gen 6. In Gen 6. Like, is it? Are you looking at 
like Ian Serebii. Yeah, it's Grass Knot. It says it can't learn it. Are you sure you're talking about Grass Knot and not Energy Ball? Yeah, no, see? Because there's a little girl by the septile. No, what is it getting? stuff from Kecleon in the first game? Me? Yeah. No. Why not? Because I because I heard that Kecleon was the strongest. But even before that, like I just didn't steal because it was wrong, Adam. Yeah, but he has so many good stuff, you just take it all and beat him, and then you run to the next floor and you're good. Uh, to get him to target a type that is supposed to be weak against? Yeah. I mean, a lot of fighting types can get rock type moves. Like, just... A lot of Pokemon in general can get, like, type moves that are, like, super effective against Pokemon that are like, that might be super effective against it. Yeah, it's a type 
Because, like, I know I bred a Blaziken, like, a long time ago that had Thunder Punch, like, to protect itself against water and flying types. Thunder Punch! I like Thunder Punch. And then, sadly, I think I had to delete Thunder Punch because I transferred it over to Sword, and it turned out that, that it couldn't use that move anymore, so I had to teach it Rock Slide instead or some shit. You can, you can Wait, why do you get rid of it? I, I just remember that I had to get rid of Aim. Like, because once I transferred it over, like, went over to its summary in the Pokemon box and, like, tapped down the move, and it was like, this move can't be used in this game, it's just deleting it. That you know things? No, the. successfully completed the job at Mets. Yeah. Um, you know what game I want to throw and get I want to play again? Like I got a like literally just a tiny bit in. I wanna play Temtem some more. That was actually really fun when I was playing it. And I was gonna play it with Ethan. Wait, my, my bitch, you two both carried him across the chasm. Wouldn't you have like seen he had feet when you like pulled him up out of the hole? Well what if they like pulled some of the dirt with him? Cause like I don't think I don't think Diglett, at least this version, is uh, you know, magnetic. So they probably used like the the, the kind of like minerals in the rock to kind of help lift them up. Fair. But yeah, I want to play Temtem at some point. Cause yeah. like I have it, I bought it, I bought Temtem right after I got my new computer. Cause I could play it Temtem on my new computer, and I played a tiny bit of it. And then Ethan was like, oh, I'll play with you when, you know, when I get it. And I was like, cool. And then that never happened. And I really want to play Temtem. Because it, I, I had a good time. I had some fun when I was playing it. It's basically just Pokemon. Yeah, it's really, it's basically Pokemon. But instead of just, like, you know, 1v1, it's always 2v2. And that's really fun. And some of the Temtem designs are really cool. But I also need to get you to play Dragon Quest 9 at some point. One day. One day. One day! Ba -na. Ba -ba -na. You remember that commercial, right? Yeah. You don't remember the One Day commercial? I think it was, uh... I think it was a Kohl's commercial? No. I always think that, and then I like, go look up and it's like, never that it. Is it fully released? I think it's still technically, like, in, like, beta and everything like that. 
But I mean, it's fun. I, I, I had fun with it. You know, I'm still having, I'm not, you know, when I played it, I still had fun with it. Um, and they keep, they update it, like, all the time. So, like, you know, there's updates, like, all the time. Um, and I think a couple months ago, they updated the story and you can go farther. So it was, like, you're not just stuck to do the first two gyms and then... That's really it. Oh, and there's the first three gym. Or the first three dojos, I think is what they call it. I'm waiting for a full release, personally. I mean, it's technically, it's gonna be cheaper now than it is later, but, I mean, that's fair. That's perfectly fair. Um, I mean, again, I still have lots of fun with it. Maybe it's JC Penny's. Yep, that's it. It was yep, it was it was JC Penny's. Also want Temtem to do really well. I want Tem. I want. I agree. I agree. I want. I want. I want TPCI to realize that you know they need to do better. Do I love Pokemon? Absolutely. Will I buy every Pokemon game that comes out? Absolutely. They they have. They've got me forever. They'll. Um, there's hardly anything they could do to make me stop liking Pokemon. But I do agree that they have become. Complacent in what they put out. They don't really innovate a ton, or they don't really. They don't keep. They don't keep what's good. You know, keep, they don't keep it around because I don't know something. For some reason they don't do things like I, think, I love Mega Evolution. I love Mega Evolution. They got rid of it after that generation was done. I like Z moves. They got rid of that as soon as that generation was done. I miss Mega Evolution. I like Dynamax. I think it's really interesting. I think it's a good combination of um, of Mega Evolution and, Dy and Z moves. You know, it's a really good balance between the two. They're probably going to get rid of it once we go to Generation Nine because that's just what they do. I I think sticking with a gimmick and having a gimmick in your battles. It's, if you're gonna make it and people like it, you need to keep it. Um, I also think. I think having a yearly release is also really bad. I think they should go back to what it was like every two or three years, they call it. Um, I hope they keep raids. I, I hope they keep the Dynamax Adventures. I think raids were a good step in the right direction. Um, but at the end of the day, raids are basically just you sitting down and just beating the crap out of a Pokemon, and that's it. There's no strategy. And the, the things that, like, the shields that come up is just... It just extends how long you beat this Pokemon up. I think the Dynamax Adventures are amazing because even though you can't have your Pokemon, yeah, even though you can't have your own Pokemon, being able to sit and like have to strategize where you go is that's that's fair. That's fair. But like having yeah, like having to strategize and like okay, we're going here, we're going here, and having to decide whether or not you want to go down a path where the Pokemon you already have are good against it, or if you want to go down paths. So you can get Pokemon that are good against what you're gonna be fighting later. I think that's really good and it really like makes you have to kind of talk more. Cause like I said, with just normal raids, you just once you have a level 100 Pokemon, whatever, man. Like you just beat the Pokemon up until eventually it's gone and then you win. Um, that makes it interesting, really good. Uh, gotta head out. It was a pleasure watching you stream. Happy New Year, it's been fun. Bring many new and exciting streams for you. Thanks, Bush Trail. Now that I have my own capture card, I definitely play this game more often. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, um, I would love to see a game where you can go to the gym, you watch the people you want, and the gym's level is tied to a better than you have rather than set path. 
I, yes, I think that would be really good too. I think that would, it would make it so that way you have the ability to kind of make your own path and kind of take the challenges however you want. Um, there's a very good video that Jello Apocalypse made, um, last year in, like, July, um, where he talked about, like, if he made a Pokemon game, what, what he would want in it. And even if puts out, it's like, I'm not gonna say, yes, okay, so Alex, you saw it. yes, I think, Yes, I think what he said, I think a lot of those things he said would be really good for a Pokemon game. I don't, I don't agree with everything he said, don't get me wrong. I don't agree with the, you know, having legendaries in the game. You know, like, I don't agree with not having legendaries in the game. I like legendaries, even though I don't use them, right? Like, I think most people I know don't use legendaries. And then they're like, cool, I caught it, and then they put it in a box forever. Um, but, like, I think having legendaries, like, attached to the at least the lore of the world, right? They don't have to be a main focus in the story. Like, in the original, in Generation 1, Mewtwo and Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres weren't main parts of the story. They were just, like, there. They were there, but they were still cool. Like, you know, they added something to the world. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they can be cool there. Like, um... Um... Like, uh, Michael Bilker and I, we want to make a Pokemon game. Um, at some point. So we actually, yeah, there was how, yeah, there was how dogs. Yep, yeah. beasts. They're not dogs. I'm sorry, I. That's how I've heard them called like most of my life and stuck in the habit. I'm sorry. I know. They're beasts. The beasts. The beasts. They're not dogs. Rob, Rob the, the Jigglypuff. Wigglytuff. What, Rob it? Ethan's here. Ethan. Hey, we were talking about you earlier. <laughs> And also, I will not do that. Have you seen how fucking tough Wiggly Tough can be? Just play Explorers in Time and Darkness. It's a different one. <laughs> we, were ta we were talking about how, uh, <laughs> we were talking about your rants on, uh, Pokemon and what moves, and what moves they learn. Why would you talk about me? <laughs> because we love you. And also because it's, I mean, I love you, but it's kind of funny when you go on these little rants about how just because of Pokemon, <laughs> just because, just because of Pokemon, so, uh, a hand means it gets fighting type moves. <laughs> that is something I have heard even since. Like, oh, in his hands, it has a fighting type move, obviously. <laughs> And must get taking type moves. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what if it has a brain, but it's no thoughts, head empty? That doesn't work because Psyduck lives taking type moves. Fair. <laughs> to be fair, I thought Psyduck got its power from its mind brains. It does. I don't know where I was going with this. Um, but yes. But yes. Uh, Michael Bullock and I want to make a one Pokemon game, and the idea we want to do is because I, because I was adamant. I was like, I want our region to be based off Colorado, because not enough things in media, in my, in my opinion, take place in Colorado or have like stuff like that. So I want a Colorado-based Pokemon region. Should we call this one Fred's too, or should we go with a different nickname? We should go with a different nickname. Okay. How about? But then loses its like. No, it does. It's never. <sighs> Psyduck is always pure water. It has never been part psychic type. Ever. Psyduck and Golduck have never been part psychic type. Not even Generation 1. No, I have not played Horizon Zero Dawn. I, I don't really, even know what that is. It's a, it's a game where um, it takes place like in the future where. Oh, no, not type. Let's call it Chrome. That works. Um, so. Uh, yes, yeah, so. Horizon Zero Dawn takes place in the, like, in the far future after the apocalypse. Wait. Yeah. I think I accidentally deleted the letter. Oh, okay. Anyways, carry on. Um, so yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn takes place... Yeah, I know, I really need to. I really, really do need... I was really excited when the trailer first came out, like, you know, a few years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only thing... The only thing that I know about Horizon Zero Dawn is it takes place far in the future. After the apocalypse, where like basically everyone lives in like you know kind of like tribes and stuff like that now, like again, and they hunt robot dinosaurs. That sounds awesome. That's all I know about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's 
all I know about Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh yeah, and the main character, um, I forgot what her name was. Ah, uh, she with a bow. I forgot the main character's name though. But yes, I like Pokemon. I think if Temtem gets really big, um, can kind of help kick TPCI's, you know, butt in the right direction. Um, the one thing that frustrates me, though, is whenever Temtem gets brought up, or just any any monster collecting game, right? Is when they go, oh, it's just a Pokemon clone, or oh, it's not as good. It's like, well, that's a very toxic mindset to have. Like, you don't, when you go... It does get exhausting. Yeah. Like, you don't go, oh my god, it's, you know, like, if you look at, like, the Metroidvania thing, right? They're like, oh... This po this game is just like Castlevania. It's a copy of it. Like no one says that. People go like, oh my god, it's another Metroidvania game, or oh look, it's another Souls game. You know, Souls type game. People don't go, oh my god, they're just copying Dark Souls. Or if they do, they're being fucking jerks about it. You know, they're not majority. But for some reason, when Pokemon or other monster collecting games get brought up, it's always like, oh, it's a Pokemon clone. Like. What? Why are, why is that one game the only game oh, that gets it's brought stand up that time way? for Chandra. It is stand time for Chandra. She has her crush on, on the Charizard. Sort of like I did when I was little You should play it again. Because again, you will be excited when you get further in the story. Yeah, it's, I I've heard I would like that game. I mean, I would, I'm not surprised I would like that game. I just I I need to play it. There's just a lot of other games I want to play. <laughs> Like, I need to finish. I need to finish. I need to finish my run through on Chroma Squad. Over the Dragon Knights. Um, I need. I need to play. I need to play through Dragon Ball Z Kakarot because I got that with the Steam Summer, uh, Steam Winter Sale. I have Kakarot now. I really want to play that. I want to play Temtem. I don't want to play Temtem again. That was. I had. I got. And I really want to get there's like a there's a there's a Temtem that's really cool. Also you want help in this Pokemon game. I'm free right now, more or less. That's fair. Right now, uh, Michael Bilker and I are kind of just in the planning stages. Um, like we have some Pokemon ideas down. We talked about kind of like because um, like the whole so the premise right you want to do is you are exploring a new. whole thing with, uh... Is, is this design doc? No, we didn't actually write down a design doc. We just best, we, we just have, we, we have what we want to do in our heads, but we need to write it down. Um... Gold rank. That's cute. <laughs> um, so, like, we, we know what we want to do. Yeah, I know. Uh, what we want to do is we basically, like, the premise is, like, you're going into this region and kind of, um, s like, settling it, right? Is like it staring you, contest time? Yes. I think it's staring contest time. Staring I can stare contest. too. Um, so like you set up you set up your own towns and the way you set things up and the what you kind of what facilities and things you put in these towns will attract different trainers and different gym leaders. So you're basically establishing I guess you're establishing these towns and gym leaders will come like, okay, well I'm gonna be the gym leader of this town. And like you have to like we basically want like the settlement system from Fallout 4. But tweak a little bit to make it so that way it makes sense for Pokemon. And also, like, I'm very, I, don't, I, I love Fallout 4. You guys have heard my rant on why I think Fallout 4 is the I best game. I need to get back game. to playing that this weekend. We do. Um, but one thing that frustrates the crap out of me about Fallout 4 is for the settlement system, your security, like the, the bar for your security for your settlement, does not impact on how well your settlement defends itself when an attack happens. Because, you know, you get the notification like, hey, this this settlement is under attack. If you go there, you just basically, like, you decide if the settlement wins that thing or not. If you don't, it's a coin, it's literally a coin flip. 50-50 chance. Um, what's this? I think it's Terra. I can't check, but I'm watching. Oh. Terra. You said Hello. you were watching and stuff. I love you. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's just a coin flip. It's literally a 50-50 chance whether or not that settlement 
um, like wins the attack or not. And like I said, your your security has nothing to do with that. And that frustrates me because then what is the point of, of having a high security for your settlement if it doesn't do anything? If it's just if it's just there when you're there, that's not fun. That's not cool. That's bad design in my opinion. So one of the things we want is like the for like the security right of this new town is you're gonna have to set up a ranger station and you can donate Pokemon that you've caught to the ranger station. And depending on what like their typing is, like you know, for, like for the surrounding Pokemon in the area, you know what the type is, what the level is, what moves they have, like having that, and obviously it's not gonna be exact moves, right? It's not gonna be like, oh, this Pokemon has, you know, this move set, which is like a competitively, it's basically just take, taking the type, right? Or like, it's kind of a thing. We, have, we can't be too big about it. Otherwise it gets, too big and complicated and it makes it really impossible to do. Um, but like, you know, say, I was like, oh, you know, uh, we're settling up this town in this forest area, right? Well, I want to give this, I want to give this fire Pokemon. I mean, yeah, it already sounds, it, but it's like, it's not, it's not, it's not that complicated, right? Like, obviously I'm, I'm making it out to be much more complicated than it is. It's actually not that, it really wouldn't be terribly complicated. I like this quality that I just got. What is it? Squad up, more members you have on your team? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a good quality. But so here's the thing. So like I said, I'm kind of I'm kind of pitching it as more complicated than it actually is. Um, like all the, the only thing the ranger station would do is be secure, right? It just makes it that way. If something attacks, it basically does a couple checks in the, back, in the background if you're not there. And then based off of certain checks, Right? It's like, oh, they pass or they fail. Like, basically, oh, this attack is, like, you know, has a... I'm just spitballing points. Obviously, it's not like we have anything balanced or anything. But say, like, this attack is worth 20 points, right? And in order for your settlement to beat it, it has to either meet or exceed 20. Um, you know, so having having a ranger station of this certain rank... Like, say, have, like you add your ranger station rank, right? So, like, say your, sta your station rank is, like, so you have a three of them there. Um, and if you have nothing else and if you only have their station rank, you know, it's just a three and it's a fail or something like that, right? But say you have donated Pokemon, you know, say you donated, like, a Charmander, right, in a forest one. Like, oh, that's worth five points, so, you know, it goes like that. Or say, like, I mean, you already have the Pokemon system plus base building attacks on said base. But, like, this, and that's all before the actual adventure. Um... I mean, I think the adventure itself is more based on kind of settling these places down, right? Um, that's that's mostly the adventure. Like, yeah, the the gyms. I I think the gyms are kind of a side thing, right? Like, they're not necessary to beat the story of the game. I think the story of the game would be primarily beating back um, the evil team. That would be the primary of the story. Which would be like, oh yeah, the evil team is basically based off like, you know, like bandits, right? Like like Wild West bandits coming in and stuff like that. Uh, so the the main bulk of the story would be, you know, kind of defeating the evil team. The uh, the gyms would be kind of a side thing that you can do. Um, oh, yeah, I'm gonna stay away from that. Um, I know I know another thing we want to do is we want. But it sounds like you're colonists and the evil team would be the natives. No, no, we don't want, we don't want them to be natives there. They would be people who came over as well, but they would want to, you know, see, because I, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that at all, because that would be very bad. The, the evil team would be, like I said, like bandits, right? Like they came like over. Like people came over with you. Yeah, they'd be, like, maybe not with us specifically, but they're also people who came over to, kind of like they want to take over. They, they want it for themselves. Well, you know, we're trying to make it for everybody. Um, brain died. But yeah, um, and like, depending on what settlements you have on there, it would attract different trainer types, right? Like, and you would have like, you would basically, you'd have like a list of trainer types, and then those trainer types would have like, you know, a name, like a name bank, and I was assuming like the name bank would be for everybody, maybe have like, 
and then di having different um, trainer types would also probably help with security, you know, and all that stuff. It's not, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be terribly complicated. It definitely wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be as robust as Fallout 4's um, settlement system. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna like custom make this, this building to look exactly what I want. It basically like, I'm gonna put a portal center here, I'm gonna put a port here, I'm gonna put a station here, I'm gonna put like stuff like that. Like it basically like, you have this type of building you can put here, you only have so many slots you can put in each town. So it's, it's not like I'm going to customize what this thing looks like. I'm going to customize how this is placed exactly where it's like. You have certain slots that you can put things in. So it's not as robust as that, but it's, you know, it's taking elements from that. And I have to do that. I'll be right back. All right. So you have to, you have to hold the fort down on your own. So we're doomed. <laughs> So, how do y'all spend New Year's Eve? Hopefully, hopefully, you were able to play peacefully, or if you had a fun, hopefully, the evening was too much for you. last month, technically, where we just dove right into, like, being in the and the house and getting rid of some junk, and we did a pretty good job, but there's still a lot more that we need to finish, and honestly, Adam and I have just kind of been slacking on that. We, so, like, we both needed to, like, jump back in. I still have so much more to sort in my room. Evolution is limited to post game. You cannot evolve at all, like during the main storyline, sadly. And the other thing that sucks is that when you do eventually evolve, that you can no longer keep the cool scarves that you're wearing. I know, I know it sucks. I mean, tactically, I don't want to go too into spoilers, but like, there's a reason that evolution is blocked until post game. Like, it's not just us, it's everybody.
sorry, I'm gonna watch Wax Nostalgic here. And, like, I don't know if y'all are gonna know what I'm talking about, but, like... Who keeps pausing me? Alright. So, like, I was talking with Adam the other day, and, like, suddenly I remembered this one book series that I used to read as a kid. Um, it was called Heartland. It was about this girl who, like, lived on, like, a horse sanctuary with her mom and her grandpa, and I think her older sister came to him, hang out too. Um, I only ever really had, like, the first three or four books in the series, but I just remember I loved them as a kid. I mean, I was a horse girl back then, let's be real. And, like, it's just weird, like, thinking about it now, because, like, I found all my old horse figurines while I was cleaning the other day, and the nostalgia just suddenly came rushing back. Like, I'm honestly just kind of surprised that I can still remember, like, some of the horses' names and stuff. Like, even to this day. And I think there was also, like, this one, like, rival, like, horse training stable place that they had to compete against. Like, that was all newer and fancy, but, like, also more mean horses. I don't, I don't know if any of y'all, like, remember what I'm talking about. Or if you do, or if you remember you know, sort of thing. Cause, like, I've had a hard time, like, finding any information about it on Tumblr. The Heartland books. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more obscure ones that I remember, like, I remember Animorphs just fine, like... <sighs> My way of reading Animorphs was kind of weird, like... Back when I was in, like, elementary school and stuff, I used to, like, read Animorphs and, like, mentally substitute the characters in those books with Sonic characters. And just for some reason, they could transform into animals. No... no real explanation, like... I didn't really come up with any explanation, like, aside from what was in the books. It was just a thing for some reason. I kind of miss Animorphs. I want to go back and, like, read it again someday and see if it still holds up. Tobias was the best character for stuff. Heck, yes, I wanted to be a bird when I was a kid, so Tobias was my favorite. Actually, I actually think there were a lot of animals I wanted to be with when I was a kid, but Tobias was my favorite of the bunch. Just like a spin off, like the part where they ended up with dinosaurs. Oh god, yeah, I've heard how that they get pretty dark near the end. Like, I think I only got like 20 or 40 something books in, and it wasn't even like in solid consecutive order. Like, I'd have like, I think I had like up to book three, and then from there it was just like cherry picked at random between the 40 somethings. Really? Like, I never actually read, like, all the books in order. Oh, Jesus, really? Dang. Alright, yeah, I definitely gotta go back and look at them again. Yeah. yeah, I think I remember reading something about, like, an interview with the author where she was like, Yeah, no, I don't wanna gloss over this. Like, even though it's a kid's book, like, this stuff is awful. Like, in real life, and kids need to, like, be aware of that. That not everything is going to have a pretty ending. That war in real life is awful and violent, and it leaves people pretty fucked up for life when they have to, like, experience it. Which, like, yeah, that's dark, but, like, banana. That, bleh, works. But at the same time, you kind of have to respect her for that, you know? 
it's kind of nice to, to like have an author like respect kids' intelligence, you know. talking about the animals books just now. Oh yeah. Never read those. Though I did play the game a little bit when I was a kid. Yeah, didn't you just get the game again recently? Well recently, as in like I don't know, about around, like a few months ago. Probably like several months ago. I saw like Yeah, like the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about like how dark the books got. Yeah, I mean from what I've from what I've heard in that podcast you showed me, it gets pretty dark. Like, even just from the start. Yeah. Named characters die. I don't know who it is. I'm going to wait to find out. That's fair. I saw the sparkles for like a second, and I was like, what? And then I, like, like... Trying to use a fairy move. It was trying. It tried its hardest. Why must you do this? <laughs> it's funny. Oh, so what? Another thing about that Pokemon game. Yes. Um, I know Bill and I want Pokemon that are over level 100. What? Yeah. You can find Pokemon in the wild that are over level 100. You can, you can catch them too. However, they never listen to you. Never. Are you, are you pulling a lizard and like raising a Pokemon level 100? No, no, no. You can only raise Pokemon level 100. That's it. If you if you raise a Pokemon, you can only raise level 100. You can catch Pokemon by level 100, but they'll never listen to you. And that's the only way to get some like some base form Pokemon. I have concerns. What are these concerns? They're not like. There's not like gonna be like a, a butt ton of like overloading. You find like a few here and there. Alright, well, I am curious to what these concerns are. No, but having a cap is a good idea. Yeah, like I think like it's not gonna be like level 200. I think like the highest. Because, like, I think the book we wanted, like, yeah, we're like, level 150. Like, let's keep it to, like, at least level 120. I think that's the highest that we have any people. Um, but yeah, like, couple, like and it's not going to be, like, all over the place, right? It's not like, you're like, oh, I'm going to go to this area. Oh, hey, look, there's, like, you know, I'm going to run into nothing but, like, level 115 Pokemon. Like, you know, it's, like, like, I think a few of them are going to be, like, encounters that you have to click on, right? Scaling purposes. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. And again, like I said, don't, they won't listen to you. So it's like, you can't be like, ah, I'm gonna go catch this level 120 Pokemon, bring it with me through my, like, through this story. It's like, it's not gonna listen to you. It won't, it won't listen to you. Ever. Even if you catch it, it won't listen to you. Also, if they never listen to you, um, you use it so that way you can get, like, certain Pokemon, like, certain, of uh, the base forms, right? That's how you get those. Also, you can donate those Pokemon to the Ranger Station. That's so annoying every time. Things trending in this like subreddit that you don't follow. What about this subreddit that you've never even visited? Yeah, it's like. 
or that you visited once and then realized you must have your thing back down. Now we're going to ping you about it forever. Yeah. I'm just gonna get rid of Oh yeah, so on. I have a list of Pokemon to come up with already. Um, so obviously we're gonna have some returning Pokemon. We have new Pokemon. Um, so the starters, for instance, right? You always gotta go with the fire, water, grass. So the the fire gotta stick with the Chinese zodiac theme. It's gonna be the big horn. It's gonna be a big horn sheep, which is the Colorado State animal. Water starter is gonna be a Canada goose. And the grass starter is gonna be a giant bison. Um, also, another thing I know is we're probably gonna have very rare to find, but you can find the starters in the wild. Because um, yeah, it's more fun. It's more fun being able to find stuff. What the? Oh dear. I did not expect to see it. Oh, another thing I remember is, um, yeah, right, yeah. I know that's the thing that, like, like, everyone, like everyone's like, oh, I want to find, I want to go catch the starters. Like, yeah, they're Which, be... I'm kind of glad that they did a little bit, like, let's go Pikachu and Eevee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, we're being able to catch one, they're going to be rare, though. You know, the starters are going to be rare, so I think if you find them, it's going to be, like, a 1% chance to find them in the area that they, you know, that they can appear in. So they're really hard to find. But they're not like, you know, you can still catch them, right? And I know uh, we're gonna make like horde battles. Um, I think the horde battles were cool. And I think there was like a, it was a very missed opportunity if they never used like, you know, horde trainer battles, right? I think that would be really cool too. Uh, but they never did that in Generation 6, so we're gonna do that. Why are there two big dogs? Oh, are those onyxes? Those are onyxes. I was correct. Would the plural for onyx be onyx? Yeah. Onyx in. <laughs> Boxing. Boxing of onyx in. Boxing of onyx in. Um, but yeah. So I know that. Um, so you have fire, big orange sheep, water is going to give us the grass starter, the giant bison. Um, gonna have a... Uh, so we're gonna have... Yeah, I just... I'm always freaked out a little, like, seeing the bigger square. Oh, from the Onyx? Yeah. This is the Onyx. It has I the same attack power as a Caterpie. I, I know, it's just, I've spent so long at, like, almost near level cap in my main file, like, I forgot, like, how tough Auto DK was early on. And Onyx gave you Yes. Onyx had the same I attack power as a Caterpie. Here. I was an Eevee, and my partner was a Torche. <laughs> when are you going to finish your Mystery Dungeon Picker? One day. One day, not today. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so... So we're gonna have... Okay. So we want to have a, a Rainbow Trap Pokemon. So our Pika clone is gonna be a prairie dog. And it's gonna be electric ground type. Um, we want a coyote Pokemon. There's no coyote Pokemon. It's Colorado everywhere. I mean I guess they could argue that Lycan Walk is like close to a coyote. Lycan Walk's more of a wolf. They're called mountain lions in Colorado. But they're called pumas. No, they're called They're all the same animal. Cougars, mountain lions, and pumas are the same animal. Oh god, that reminds me our mom used that my mom used to call Richard for a little mountain lion. That's fair. That's fair, Will. You talking about a cougar NPC? Oh my god. <laughs> a meow for a Ah, uh, why would you do this to me? I'm, I'm gonna put it like in parentheses after my mom. I'm gonna put it in yeah, with, with a question mark. Uh, 
Oh, so we want an Eevee like Bug Pokemon. Um, where, you know, it all parts of the different typings. Depending on what we want. Bug Rock, Bug Fire, Bug. Something like that. Because, like, that's the other thing. Um, a Bear Pokemon. No one like this one. A Bear Pokemon. Uh, that starts as Barrier and evolves into Barricade. Possum Pokemon, because there's no possum Pokemon. Uh, Scorpion Pokemon. Yeah, let's see what look it's in. Scorpion Pokemon. Uh, the invasive species fish in the beta. Uh, the fo one, okay, so one of the fossils, we need to come up with the other fossil. Fighting or rock type for the bear. Um I don't know. I don't think we decided yet. I just think we're like, we need a bear Pokemon in barrier and barricade. I think that's as far as that that thought process went. Um, I would say probably steel, though. Like, at, le at least steel, right? Something, like, if it's not pure steel, something steel, right? Um, I think that would be cool. Wait, shit, should we have given the weed a little nickname? Too late now. Too late now. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so the fossil Pokemon, right? The fossil Pokemon, at least, for, you know, we have one of them, you know? Both of them, yeah. One of them. Obviously a Bronco Pokemon. Um, obviously, you know, Lucifer is one of the legendaries. That that was that was something I said straight out the bat. I'm like, Lucifer is a legendary Pokemon. That that's it. Hard stop. He's in the game. He's a legendary Pokemon. Never. That's never not gonna be a thing. Um. I was thinking like a Grass Pony top variant. That could be cool too. So yeah, so but anyway, fossil, the fossil, the fossil. We have one of them. The fossil that we have is a grass rock Pokemon and it is a Stegosaurus. Because the Stegosaurus is the Colorado State Dinosaur. But yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, maybe like a ground Ponyta would be pretty cool. Um, Lucifer, obviously, Dark Ghost. Like, well, so like, we're also not gonna have box legendaries, right? We're gonna have three, we're gonna have three g different games. And, like, the games, like, depending on what game you choose will be your starter. So that's how you choose your starter, is what game. And then I did it for Colleen, and I was like, that was way more work than I ever want to put into this ever again. So I never did it again. Well, I was like, I put, I, I made that Pokemon. I put work in that Pokemon. It's going in the game. Because otherwise, it would have been, or other, other than for the enjoyment of my friend. But other than that, it would have been for nothing. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to go, put that. I don't know Pokemon made. Yeah, I made one for Colleen. Um, it was, it was like, like a while ago. It was like over a year ago. It was almost two years ago I did that. Because it was when I was in the, I did it when I was in the mentorship program. Um, and I made one for Colleen. It was, it was, uh, so it was Narcleen was the first evolution with Narcolepsy and Colleen. And then it evolved into Cryptlene, like, you no, know, Cryptid and Colleen. And, like, I still have that on my phone because, like, I, I put work into that gosh dang thing. Like, I didn't just be like, I, put, I made the typing and, like, it kind of just... No, like, I made it as if it was going in Cerebi.gosh dang com. Like, I came up with, like, everything. Pokedex entries, base stats, like, all its, like, yeah, its uh, level up moves, its TM moves, its move tutor moves. Everything. I put all of that work in there and that took me like a week to do one like to do one person's Pokemon. I was like, that that took that took so much time and effort. Because I gotta think, right? I was like, okay, well I gotta come up with this Pokemon. It's gotta fit the theming of that of that person. 
It was also like I would work with the typing, and like I did. I was like, okay, well, is this person gonna be a single stage, a two stage, a three stage? Um, like, what is this gonna be? Yeah, it's almost like people are paid to do that IRL. I agree. Um, and so like, I'll, 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 like, I'm not gonna read everything, but like, you know, Naruto is a, is a fairy type Pokemon, right? And it has the abilities Quick Nap, which are both the both the abilities how are brand new abilities I came up with too. So it gets Quick Nap. This Pokemon falls asleep every other turn. It gets rid of the status conditions when it's when it's sleep this way, except for sleep. Um, and then, like obviously, like it sleeps and then wakes up, sleeps and then wakes up, sleeps and then wakes up. Um, you know, unless it's asleep, then the ability doesn't do anything. It's just asleep. Um, and then the ability Heavy Sleeper. This Pokemon stays asleep for two more turns than normal, as opposed to, you know, Early Bird, which, right, you, like, you wake up two turns after, so Heavy Sleeper is you can sleep for two more turns. And people are like, well, why would you want to do that? Uh, it's called Rest Talk. Or Sleep Talk, sorry. You move Sleep Talk and Snore. Those are good moves. And, like, having the ability to be like, I'm going to go to sleep, and I'm going to stay asleep for longer so I can use my Sleep Talk stuff. You know. Also, like, being able to do quick nap, like, oh, I'm, I fell asleep! Sleep talk. Like, that's such a good sleep talk Pokemon! Um, there's the, the Pokedex entry. This Pokemon falls asleep quite frequently. It uses its innate magical abilities to keep itself upright for combat. It always looks for new powers in an attempt to find a way to keep it awake for longer. Like, that's the Pokedex entry. It has a base stat total of 303. It's HP, you know. I'm not gonna go into every single one, but like, has you know that. Because the reason I did that was because I checked. Because I was like, oh, like I said, I was like, okay, is this first stage, second stage, three, or three stage? Okay, this is a two stage. Okay, I'm gonna look at all the ty the typings that this Pokemon is in. What is kind of like the average base stat total for a Pokemon that is within, you know, a two stage Pokemon thing? Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what the fairy type was, and then because Crippling turns into a dark type as well. I'm gonna check the fairy and the dark type and see what the average is, and then make my own thing. And then I also made, but complete coincidence, uh, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna keep that because it's awesome. Like I said, uh, Narclean's base stat total is 23, which was the room number of the study room that we did in college. Room 303. So I was like, that's a perfect coincidence and amazing. Um, you know, Narkly evolves into Crippling in level 30. Um, it's, it gets the moves uh, Fairy Wind and Lucky Champ like right off the bat, and then at level 6 it gets Sweet Kiss and like all these different things, and like, an entire TM list, an entire move tutor list. Guys, you like, found all the typing Jedi curve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and then all its egg moves too. Like obviously, if you breed it, it's gonna have different egg moves. So I had to go with egg moves. And what made sense for it to get as an egg move is you know that it, that it could learn. So it wouldn't make sense for it to get, like, as a level up move. So I had to do that as well. And then obviously, I did that, I had to do that for one Pokemon, I had to do that for the second Pokemon. And also, like, when Pokemon evolve, a lot of the times they can learn moves via TM that they couldn't learn as a previous as a previous one. So I had to give moves, I had to make sure that the TM list was balanced where it couldn't learn all the TMs in the first and second stage. So I had to make sure some of them could only be learned in the second stage. Like uh, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and Flamethrower, it can get as a TM move as, as Crippling, but it can't get those as Narcolean. Um, you know, uh, Crippling is, fair, like I said, very dark type. Uh, same, same abilities, and the Pokedex entry was after being desperate enough to delve into the dark arts for its cure to sleepiness, this Pokemon has mastered them and uses its newfound powers to make everyone share in its fate. Rude. Yeah, I'm like I did, I did so much work. I did so much work on this Pokemon. It was ridiculous. And then I was like, I was like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> like, that was that was way too much work for just a side project. Um, but it, I mean, I had fun. I had fun doing it, but that was just a lot of work. It was just a lot of work. Um, I even drew out, like, what the Pokemon would look like, too. And I don't really draw that much, but I drew it out so that way it would look like a visual. Um, and I started making a... I started making doing Sprite on Pork, too, but I stopped doing that after. But, um, I think it was fun, but it's just... It's a lot of work, and I was not gonna do it again. And so I was like, we were looking around talking about this game, and I was like, I'm putting this game, I'm putting this Pokemon in there. I've already made it. 
put work to do it before you get in there. <laughs> so that's in, so that Pokemon's in there. Jedi Curve is a term wizards are supposed to use. This with the typical mana cost for colors, abilities, and power to life ratio. From there, they have some cards go above or below this curve, but the curve is the norm. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I did do that. I don't remember it. Uh, and it's not like I wrote it down or anything. I just kind of made like, okay, well, here's kind of the basis of how this thing works. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna take this and kind of tweak it to where I want, I want it to be. Yeah, I did that. I don't remember, like, I don't remember the process anymore, because it was like a while ago, but like, I did it. Again, it was fun. But I was not gonna do that for all of the, all of the people on... Can you imagine if I did that for everybody on the lineage of Lissa? Let alone just the people I knew on that, on that server? Can you imagine? At that, it was a lot, a lot more work <laughs> than having to come up with everyone's Digimon partner. That was easy compared to working for the that, that god dang thing. That would be a new generation's worth of Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Something a team of people do. Yeah. Yeah. That is something a team of people normally do, and I did that for one. So, like, I feel... I'm gonna have to do that again when Phil can I make those Pokemon, right? Like, we make new Pokemon and stuff like that. I'm gonna have to do that again. I'm gonna have to do that again. But... Yeah, but at least if it's, if it's, if it's for a thing... Like, I love my friends. I love them dearly. But... Doing something for a project that I want to do that I'm passionate about is a lot easier to do than doing it just because you like your friend a lot and you just want to do stuff for them. It's a lot easier to do stuff when you have a goal than just, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> That's true. I say that now. That is very true. But oh, here we go. These fox. Sorry, I got loud. It's okay. It's a lot um, that's true. But also, to be fair, it's not like this game is coming out this year. This is definitely a project we're going to be working on for quite a while, so it's not like I have to do all the Pokemon hey, right fuck now. you, Gengar. I like my house. Yeah, that house is pretty cool. That's cool my house, though. Hey, yeah, check it out. We've never seen a mailbox before. Yeah, right? Mailboxes are such a new invention. Standing there in the background, like with my mouth open, not doing anything. <laughs> oh, it's just like every other, like all the, like all the, the protagonists in Pokemon games. Oh no! This thing's attacking the town! I'm just standing there with like a blank smile on my face forever. Uh, best to have a doc set up with all this info you gather, so you don't have to remember it. That's that's true. Yeah, we really should. Domination with the team, with the team name like Team Meanies, really? Right. Yo, you get what's on the box. You know, the names on the package, you get what's on the box. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think having a document for both Bilker and I to look over, like on like Google Docs, would probably be a good idea. Excuse um, me. You know, instead of just me having it on my phone. But yeah, yeah. Baby. Oh god, yeah, yes, call me now. You'll call her later. I will. <laughs> um, but, I mean, my main... That's not my main goal to work on this year, right? That's gonna probably... If I work on it, it's gonna be like a side thing. My main goal this year is to work on that gosh dang tabletop, like, role-playing game I want to I wanna make. I want to work on that some more. Like, the base is there. Like, I, I the calculations are there. Just making sure how a way to make it so that way players can understand it, you know, and not have to have complicated fucking math in their head to do it would be, I think that's the main, that's going to be the main goal, to try to figure a way to do that. Because having to calculate, because like having to calculate hit chance from the weapon plus your skill level times two 
plus um, like other bonuses and stuff you have, and then minusing the other person's like um, skill, I think, is the dodge chance. Like how you do that in your head is gonna be not fun. So finding a way to put it so that way it's on the sheet and easily accessible and easily seen without making it as like over like overly complex like in like in a Pathfinder in 3.5 where like that sheet is just like crammed with all of this stuff. I think having it so that way like I think another another thing that's making it make it easier is having your like how many items your character can hold being limited would also help. So you can't be like, ah, yes, I have like seven swords and like all these all these items that do other things. Like your, your character can only hold five items on them and that's it. I think that's gonna be helpful because like, you can have you can have the calculation right there in your item cat in your little item category as opposed to you know Dungeon Dragons will work differently. You know, having your weapons in one slot and then like all your items in a different spot. Like, having all that right there is going to be good. Um, oh god, my controller's on the parts again. Character sheets gonna be a little more difficult if I don't know how I want to organize. 